When we think of maps, we typically imagine a flat two-dimensional representation of the Earth. However, the Earth is actually a sphere, and translating that three-dimensional shape onto a flat surface is not an easy task. It is similar to flattening an orange peel, and it can't be fully flattened without some sort of distortion. That's where map projections come in. They allow for us to take information from the Earth's surface and present it in a way that's easy to understand on a flat map. But with different needs and uses for maps, we need different types of projections to accurately represent the Earth. In this video, we'll explore why we need different projections and how they're used to best represent the Earth on a two-dimensional surface. Map distortion is an unavoidable result of map projections. Because the Earth is a sphere, it is impossible to fully represent it on a flat surface without some sort of distortion. Different projections will result in different types of levels of distortion. For example, in the image, the guy's hair and neck is stretched out and enlarged while projected from a globe to a 2D plane. Just how the polar regions are distorted and enlarged on certain projections, such as the Mercator projection. When it comes to map projections, there are three main characteristics to consider. It's properties, physical class, and aspect, which we'll be going over in this video. First off, the property of a map projection describes what property it is conserving. For example, we can conserve shape, meaning that all shapes on the map will be correct on a conformal projection. For instance, Australia on a conformal projection will have the same shape as Australia on a globe. However, one side effect is, in order to conserve shape, area is very distorted. In one of the most famous projections, the Mercator projection, while the shape of Greenland is accurate, it is widely distorted by area, resulting it in being larger than the whole continent of Africa, while in reality it is only approximately the size of Algeria. The next property we can conserve is area, using an equivalent projection. In this projection, area sizes are correctly represented, and this is useful for applications where area is important. However, to conserve area, the shapes of areas are heavily distorted. In our example of an equivalent projection, the Gall Peters projection, we can see how Greenland is now accurately represented in terms of size, but its shape is stretched out horizontally while being squished vertically in order to achieve this. Finally, we can conserve distances using an equidistant projection. It correctly represents distances, but it is limited, as in distances can only be shown true to scale from one point to any other point on the map or in only in certain directions. For example, in the platte carré projection, distances between parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude are consistent across the whole map. On the other hand, by using an azimuthal projection, we can make distances constant from a single point. In this example, this would be the city of Los Angeles, which is placed in the middle of the map. In these projections, a combination of area and shape is being distorted, such as the shape of Antarctica and the area of Australia in this example. Now, we don't always have to choose a single property to conserve. We can compromise between multiple properties such as area and shape by distorting both area and shape, but to a lesser degree compared to a conformal or equivalent projection. You might be wondering why we call map projections projections. They're called projections because the three-dimensional Earth is projected onto a cylinder, cone, or flat plane, and then unrolled to create a flat image of the Earth. In this example, we have a globe, and by projecting the land surfaces using a light source, the areas which are projected onto a cylinder is recorded and can be later unrolled to create a flat representation of the Earth. Now how do we know what shape to project our surface onto? This again depends on your use case. For example, if you're looking to make a projection of the whole world, a cylinder would be your best option. For mid-latitude areas, such as Canada or the United States, a conic projection would be ideal, as the cone can be easily placed such that its tangent, or the point where the cone touches the spherical globe, is at the mid-latitude regions. Finally, we have azimuthal projections for either polar regions or areas focusing around a single point. As a result, for polar regions, we typically focus the projection on the north or south pole. For example, this projection would be useful if you want to show all the flights departing from a certain location, where we would focus the map on that certain location. The final characteristic we should consider for map is aspect. This is essentially where we want to place our cylinder, cone, or azimuth to focus on a specific area. Normal aspects are projections which are based on the poles, which are the maps we typically see from day to day. However, we can also have transverse projections where the projection is based on the equator, this is used in the UTM projection, which we'll be talking about later, or oblique projections, which is placing the shape in any other orientation. Therefore, we should choose a projection based on the extent of our area of study, the position of our area of study, and what we want to conserve, and also what we're okay with distorting. We will quickly run through an exercise to determine what projection we should choose. 
Imagine a scenario where we want to show the spatial extent of glaciers in Antarctica. Think of the three criteria of projections and bring them together to choose a projection. Feel free to pause the video and think about three main characteristics we just discussed. For this projection, we want to use it as a model projection because we're focused on a polar area, not to the extent of the entire world or not even a mid-latitude region. For the aspect of the projection, considering that we are in Antarctica, we'd want to focus the projection around the South Pole to capture Antarctica. Finally, we would want to preserve area because we are most interested in its spatial extent, or area covered by glaciers in Antarctica. Therefore, we should choose a South Pole as a model equal area projection, as shown. Before we close off, I'll go over a special type of projection commonly used in local maps. The UTN projection is a particular type of cylindrical projection which involves projecting points on Earth's surface onto a cylinder which is tangent to the surface at a specific meridian, a line of longitude, instead of the equator. Note that the further we go from the meridian, the more distortion. Therefore, areas near the meridian where the cylinder is tangent to the globe has the least distortion. The UTM system divides the Earth into 60 zones, each 6 degrees of longitude wide. Each zone has its own central meridian and its own transverse Mercator projection, with a separate projection for each hemisphere, north and south. By creating multiple map projections for a narrow band, it can be used to accurately map local areas, such as your city. Thanks for watching the video, and catch you guys in the next one.